While both federal and local governments have responded to the spread of the coronavirus in critical ways, the acknowledgement of the mental illness vulnerabilities has been cursory. By learning to manage your exposure to media coverage, following a calm yet cautious approach, showing compassion and kindness towards another, and actively managing your well-being, will help us all stay connected during the COVID-19 crisis. somebody else's life at risk and it's not on them. Restaurants, education, vaccines and medicines, having access to amazing, incredible nature. Access to transportation, your health, things like coffee, driving with the windows rolled down or a good walk. It's the simple things that make life worthwhile and enjoyable. kind of good to know all this stuff but then I'm kind of sick of turning every radio station on and every channel and it's just coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus because it's kind of like overwhelming and I don't really want to hear it when he's something, something, something else besides coronavirus, something else besides coronavirus, something else besides coronavirus, something else besides coronavirus. In dealing with stress and anxiety relating to COVID-19, we're likely to behave in different ways. Some of us might choose to distract ourselves and try to switch off from what's going on, while others will seek constant reassurance from friends or family or obsessively checking the news. According to Reach Out, signs of stress can include dips in mood, a lack of motivation, muscle tension, headaches, insomnia, irritability and restlessness. But how we respond to stressful situations depends largely on our personal circumstances and personality. Humans are pre-programmed to continuously estimate how likely it is that something negative is going to happen and how severe that negative event or impact is going to be. Supermarkets are urging shoppers not to buy more than they need amid concern over coronavirus link stockpiling. Someone at the square just walked past us holding a trolley with plastic gloves on and you know those like fruit bad plastic bags like over her gloves holding onto the trolley with like a mask on. I was laughing at stockpiling toilet roll but now that I actually need some it's getting a bit beyond a joke. Even the Kleenex is all gone. I'm not happy. I had a woman who stockpiled dozens of eggs, fruit and sauces but then had to bin it bin them all which you would expect because she spent 
over 250 pounds on one shop. She grabbed as much fruit, veg, eggs and meat off the shelf as she could. And now, unsurprisingly, she's having to throw it out because it's gone mouldy sitting untouched in her cupboard. I've never been a hoarder in the past, but when this panic buying started, I just did what everyone else was doing. In the first week, I packed my fridge and cupboards with 250 pounds of groceries. Social media is one of the most popular ways to share news nowadays. You've seen pretty much everything in terms of the coronavirus over the last few days to weeks. The news has made people aware of the situation that has been constantly deteriorating the sense of normalcy across the nation. Social media has also educated us on the symptoms of COVID-19, in turn perhaps saving lives. Safety tips are another enormous thing spreading through social media. One in particular is the term social distancing. The act of social distancing involves deliberately increasing the physical space between people to avoid spreading illness. As the elderly are the most vulnerable, make sure to stay at least six feet away. This will prevent them and you from catching COVID-19. To contrast my first point that social media is great for spreading news, it can also be a misinformation or fake news. Misinformation, especially about COVID-19, can cause panic. Make sure to educate yourself on other research and understand if what you're actually reading is factual. Since I could not physically interview people to promote social distancing, I still wanted opinions from my friends and family on the coronavirus. I asked if it was possible to film themselves answering some questions. For me, it was really interesting to see what they thought of it and their own opinions. Sometimes it's good to not only stay in your own mind, but to listen to others. Um, this interview is going to be about the current, current coronavirus. coronavirus. In your opinion, does the coronavirus have too much hype? I think it does, yeah, on the news especially. Um, if you've got the TV on most of the day, then um, they do go on a bit too much about it really and um, almost treating it like it's a film and not, not reality really where, where people are dying and, and losing their lives. So I think, yeah, they, they do do hype it up a bit too much really. Hype it up a bit too much, it's hype too much, it's a bit too much. Yes, the coronavirus does have too much hype. Are you all my personal In my opinion, the coronavirus, I think, has too much hype, but then it also doesn't have too much hype because, like, it's kind of good to know all this stuff, but then I'm kind of sick of turning every radio station on and every channel and it's just coronavirus, 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 because it's kind of like overwhelming and I don't really want to hear it when he hear something else besides coronavirus. But other than that, I think it's good because we kind of need to know what's going on and like how to be safe. Um, definitely because we've had flu and colds and people suffer with cancer and so much more. And this is the one thing that, yeah, massively, overly hyped. Um, I would say, like, at the beginning, everyone thought that it had too much hype, I guess. But then as it's, like, over time, it's gotten, like, I feel like everyone's been more aware of how it's more serious it is. And, like, at the moment, I think it's got a good amount because they're not the same size. So the more hype, the better because the coronavirus is a global pandemic that is constantly changing and the statistics and what we can do to prevent it is constantly changing and we need to keep ourselves updated but it is on the news and on every single channel 24 7 and it just gets very draining
Well, I mean, that one's a pretty easy to answer. Anything that'll sell well in the news is going to have a lot of hype because people are going to going to watch whatever stations are sort of pushing that. Like people, you know, they like scary news. It's something that sounds kind of sick, but people um, people enjoy hearing about bad things that happen. With all the hype it makes, it makes us realise how necessary it is to stay indoors and be safe. With major changes in our society, we have to adapt to those changes no matter how hard they are. From a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being deathly afraid, how scared are you of the coronavirus? For me personally, I'd say I'm about number 5 at the moment on the scale. Um, although it does seem pretty bad when you read about it and see it on TV, um, nobody here in this area that I know of has got it and I think if somebody had got it in our street or where I worked then I'd probably turn that scale up a bit but at the moment I'm kind of in the middle, um, not, not too worried about it. What do you think, like a eight? No, I'm gonna say like a seven. Say hi Paige. Hi Paige. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I think I'm probably maybe a 4 or a 3. Like I'm not too afraid of this. I'm just, I don't know. I'm kind of, I think I'm more naive about it than anything because like I don't really, like I can just stay away from it and do what my parents tell me. I would say 1. 10 being deathly? Yeah, 1 being not all. Well, for myself, probably like a 5 because I got, yeah, I know it can still affect younger people, but obviously I'm not as vulnerable as some, but then for other people, like that always plays in my mind, like about how like my grandparents are coping and how like older people in the community and younger people are going because I'm, I'm very scared for them but hopefully it'll be okay. Probably a four out of 10, just because I don't know what the future looks like and I don't know the severity of it, I guess. Four, because there's only 47 people in Australia. So I um. I'm scared, I suppose, um, of the, you know, the brutality of China and their government. However, I'm not, I don't think it'll affect me greatly. You know, I'm trying to stay safe and all that. And it is sickening what is happening. For myself, I'm not particularly scared, but I do worry about my children and particularly my grandchildren. I am not scared of catching the virus myself. I am more worried about giving it to my family and loved ones. How do you feel about work being shut down or is it shut down in your case? Well, for me, I'm self-employed, so I'm having to stay at home at the moment until this kind of all clears over. Uh, I do also work part-time for a company as well, and that is just carrying on at normal at the moment and we're just having to stay at least two metres apart and to take extra precautions with that. Yeah, I'm a key, key worker so um, so yeah I'm still having to go to work uh, just, but only part time. For me school is not my favourite place on the earth, it gives me so much anxiety. Anyway, so school being shut down, I'm kind of enjoying it and I already have anxiety about going back but it doesn't really matter. Um, but for people like my parents and things who obviously don't get a lot of work or can't work, um, it's probably very distressing for them. So I feel like it's not good that in that way. But if it's what we need to do to stop this virus, then it's what we need to do, I guess.
Work's good because Carl's working from home and he's happy. I work from home anyway. School not so much because daughter's in year 11 and it's an important year. So yeah, more, more, more about school. Like, me personally, I, I'm actually loving working from home. I feel like I work, I've been working better this way. And, like, it's more, like, individual and, like, self-driven. So, I have been enjoying working from home. Because, although, work being, yeah, school's, school's good at home. Because, although I do miss my friends a lot. But, yeah, and then my work's been shut down. So, that's a bummer, but... I'm not like struggling for money at the moment so that doesn't affect me that much and hopefully I can just get my job back when it comes back obviously but we're young so it doesn't affect, that part doesn't affect us as much. I don't like it because I procrastinate and I struggle to concentrate. I find when I sit in a classroom with a teacher talking and explaining it to me I get more work done and I find myself more productive. It's good that I work from home. I think it'd be better if you went to school. I feel it's absolutely necessary to close the schools down and close some businesses down as well um, to avoid the spread of the virus. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I do think that it is a bit excessive trying to keep everyone inside all the time because as we know right now a lot of laws are being passed a lot of privacy laws about um you know government want, governments wanting to track our phones so that they can make sure that we're home but the thing is once this whole coronavirus thing is over those laws won't be rolled back you know they'll stay there and they'll remain um which is a bit scary and also the introduction of 5g 5g a powerful new data service. It's to keep us out of the way by keeping us inside and so we don't see the new telephone towers being built and all the new infrastru infrastructure being put in place by Chinese informants embedded into the Australian society. For me, online schooling has been one of those major changes and I have not yet adapted to that change as it, it has become more independent work even though teachers still explain the work. In what way is the coronavirus pandemic affecting you the most? Um, the way it's affecting me the most really is probably not being able to see friends and family, um, not being able to see my, my mother, my father-in-law, mother-in-law and friends uh, that I normally would meet in the park, um, not being able to meet them. I think that's probably the thing that's affecting me the most really. Oh, it's just not being able to see my friends and not being able to go out and, like, eat. <laughs> the pandemic is affecting me the most by not being able to go outside and do my regular things. Um, not seeing my friends and stuff like that's kind of hard. Um, also, kind of not knowing if I can still transfer from moms to dads and things like that is affecting me the most. Not so much really, just more, I'd say more worried about how the world itself is going to cope with it, but as a family not so much. I'd probably say my motivation to exercise, I've been struggling like, like going for walks i can't really find the motivation to do exercise and all that like i've set goals at the start to do it and then like they kind of just fall apart but i've been able to stick to my school i can get all that done but mainly definitely exercise also because i miss sport a lot i've been missing out on a lot of sport things right now and that's what like drove me and like it was fun um 
Um, I think the isolation because I surround myself with people a lot. So when I'm when I can't surround myself with people, I begin to feel lonely. I get to work from home every day. So positive effect. Well, I, mean, I would say it's affecting. Um, I mean, not just me, but everyone's mental health. You know, not being able to go outside and um, the abuse of power from the police. I mean, handing out a bloody, you know, $11,000 fine on the spot, that's, that's abuse of power. That's not right, you know. Um, to have that much power, that's just, that's draconian. I can't say it's particularly affecting me personally because I have a medical problem, so I'm indoors a lot. But I do think of other people a lot and worry for other people as opposed to worrying about myself. The coronavirus has impacted me in a lot of ways, but I feel like it mostly impacted me mentally. How do you think the coronavirus has affected the economy? Uh, it's really hard to say at the moment, but it is going to have a massive negative effect on it. Um, I think once this all kind of clears over, I think there'll be a massive boost to the economy where people will be really kind of keen to get back to work and, and get back out shopping again and going to restaurants and bars and going on holiday and I think a lot of hotels and flights will be will be fully booked once once we can once we're all able to do that because I think people have realised what they've missed um, by not being able to do these things and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, there'll be a massive boost to the economy once it, once it's all kind of cleared. Uh, long term though I think um, the country as always has had to borrow quite a lot of money to, so that will take a long time to, to get back so we'll see. <laughs> How do you think the coronavirus has affected the economy? Economy? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's kind of shut down everything, so it's kind of made everything go bad, except for those that sell hand sanitizer and toilet paper. I think the coronavirus is affecting the economy kind of in the long run, so it will still be affecting, feeling the effects of coronavirus. Um, in years and years to come and uh, just as obviously heaps of people aren't working um, kind of stuff like that I think will definitely affect the economy. Ooh, um, don't think we're gonna know that until we go back to normal and see how it's affected the economy. Of my job and lots of other people have. I think it's had a terrible impact. Lots of people not making money. It's yeah, not been very good for the economy. Um, a lot of businesses are having to close, and a lot of people are losing their jobs. So the economy is like struggling financially. Hard to tell at the moment. I guess we'll find out in a, a year's time. Um, I mean, it has affected the economy a little bit. I mean, not greatly. You know, in a negative. I mean, it has. Cause people are out of a job and stuff like that, and that's not. That's not good. But I don't think. I don't think the Australian dollar has dropped too much. Or maybe it has, I don't really keep up with the economic side of it, more the political. Um, I think it has affected the economy, it's obvious isn't it? A lot of people aren't working. Um, I can only say, uh, if this goes on much longer, we will be in recession for many, many years to come. 
Similarly, the world's economy has drastically been impacted as the circular flow of the economy has been cut off as many companies and business have stopped and a lot of people have lost their jobs. In your opinion, what can the public or the government do to promote well-being and decrease the number of cases during this time? Well, I think we need more face masks in this country and we need probably more testing as well. Uh, so if people can get tested and then they can get back to being a key worker again because there's a lot of hospital workers that can't get back to work because they, they can't get tested. Um, I think in terms of like ventilators and things like that, I think this country is doing pretty, pretty well for things like that. I think the hospitals at the moment are coping. So yeah, I think overall it's, it's, it's pretty good but could, could be better. give out free vaccines for flu and encourage people to stay home and provide people with the help that they need regardless of whether they have public or private health insurance and other stuff. I think what the public can do is Definitely social distancing, um, washing hands, staying at home, self-isolating if you've been told to. And also the government is providing enough information that everybody kind of understands what to do, but not providing too much information that people will freak out about. I think that's, that is a big one. Uh, I see a lot of people still hanging out with their friends and stuff, and I know the government can't control that completely, but... I don't know, it's just kind of frustrates me when I'm not allowed to go see my friends and then I see other people around going to visit their friends and like going to the beach in groups because they've got that attitude where like, oh, we're young, it doesn't affect us. But in reality, it does affect us. And if we don't stay inside, it will. And it's just risking other people's lives because you miss your friends. Like, it's not like the quicker we all go in isolation, the quicker we can get out and see them. And it's just... It's not a good mindset that people I definitely know my age are having. And like, we're all in it together. Like we all miss our friends. Like no one's, no one's like, it's just, everyone needs to be a bit less, less selfish, selfish, selfish. Call them FaceTime, we have so much technology we can use to contact everyone. Like, I don't think it's a fit, I personally, Maybe it's just the introvert inside of me, like, thriving, but, I don't know, it's not that hard. I think the government needs to understand that as much as people say it's easy to stay inside, it's not necessarily. And I think that the government needs to listen to the other countries that have had really high spikes with the coronavirus and like listen to them and what they suggest to do and I think whatever the government decides to do with this the public needs to listen and understand that although it takes a lot of time we still need to understand that we all need to put in the effort so that it doesn't affect us as much. Stay at home, social distancing. Um. It's hard to say, but yeah, everyone, I guess, just stay inside. Don't give in, you know, don't give in. Hopefully this will end soon, but, you know, if we don't cooperate, then it won't end soon, and that's kind of, you know, as much as we want it to end, it might not. So, got a social distance, all that. Unfortunately, our government, the British government, and also many governments in other countries, have left it too late. We should have taken precautions a long time ago. But unfortunately, I don't think now, in my opinion, that the government can improve on what they're doing now. But we must be careful and wash our hands, uh, wash our hands constantly throughout the day. And if possible, wear face masks and use hand sanitizers. Um, do you wear a face mask out? 
I don't currently wear a face mask, but I do have some here to use. If the situation does get worse and I do have people in within my job in the area that, that are, are getting it, then I will wear a face mask then. No. I don't wear a face mask. Um, yeah, that's how I... No, I don't, mainly because I don't go outside very much. I mean, I'm lots, but I don't go out. No, I don't. No. no, I do not wear a face mask out because um, I feel like the virus has been implanted into hotspots um, or places of interest. Chinese government where you know, they want to take out certain demographics and stuff like that, like even old people, you know. Bring it on. I'd love to wear a face mask. I think everybody should, that goes outside should be wearing a face mask. If it only affords a little bit of protection, it's something. As for me, I tend to wear a face mask when, when, whenever I go out, but it doesn't always happen. Are you missing sports or enjoying a break? How's your favourite restaurant shut down? Enjoying a break. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, lots of my favourite restaurants have, broke, have um, closed, but uh, I guess my favourite restaurant is, is at home, home cooked food anyway, so... <laughs> I am missing sport. I was supposed to catch an apple team this year and I can't because of coronavirus, but I'm missing sport. Yes, my favourite restaurants are shut down. We do more. More sport. sport. I haven't got a favourite one, so then they're all shut down, so as long as I get taken, I'm happy. <laughs> I am missing sport. There's lots of sport that I'm missing out on at the moment, but. I don't know, I kind of mix, like I kind of do enjoy the break. I kind of feel guilty about enjoying the break when I'm missing all that sport, but I don't know, you just adapt, I guess. My family likes to like go to the small businesses and get delivery or pick up, but so they can stay afloat. I'm missing sport a lot, yes. Join a break. Yes. Monkey King. Um I mean it's not much like I did much sport anyways, but you know, I suppose I'm enjoying the break. No McDonald's is not shut down, thank God. I can't say I'm missing a break because I don't really have many holidays. And the sport that I do do is at home. Well, I say sport, but I do a lot of exercises at home. I haven't got a particular favourite restaurant, but my takeaway uh, uh, restaurant is still open, and occasionally we do have a takeaway, but we are a bit wary at the moment, probably, probably because it is a Chinese restaurant. When shutdown laws were initiated, my gym closed and my jiu-jitsu centre also closed which highly impacted my routine and my health. Has so, the coronavirus negatively impacted your mental health? No, not at all. Um, all fine. Yeah. Um, I don't think coronavirus has had a negative impact on my mental health. If anything, it's probably helped it because I don't have to be around things I don't want to do. No. I don't know, I don't think it does, only really my exercise hasn't affected my mental health. If anything it's positive because I like school better at home. Um, yes, in a way it has just because I've had more time to think and I've been overthinking and finding that I've been feeling more lonely.
Uh, in a sense, yeah, because it's scary to think that this Chinese government has more control over us than our own government has over us. Um, you know, like buying up real estate. They've been doing this for you know, 20, 30 years. Um, this is this isn't anything new um, on China's part. You know, they just can't. They just cannot be trusted. You know, they cannot be trusted. Um, they have they have objectives and greater interests that are you know in incomprehensible to us, and we wouldn't understand. But you know, they they are quite advanced in that aspect. No, not necessarily. I do worry quite a lot about it. I get upset about it. Not for myself, but for other people. I think a lot of people are dying unnecessarily. And I think it's shambolic the way the government have treated nursing homes. They're only just now getting the PPEs and the necessary equipment. And a lot of people, we've lost a lot of people from nursing homes that shouldn't have been lost at all. Isolating yourself and changing your day-to-day -day routine takes a toll on your mental health and limits to what you can do, what you're able to do. Have you had to cancel a trip during the coronavirus? Do you feel if you are or are not part of the community and why? Yes, I have, yeah. yeah. We were planning on going to Rhodes uh, to, to a friend's wedding and it looks like that will be cancelled now. Um, yeah, I think think part of the community, we still stay in touch with, with local community on Facebook and also as well every Thursday at 8 o'clock everybody comes out and claps in the street for the NHS and, and the key workers and I feel like that's really good uh, being part of the community in, in doing that so so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with, with that. Yeah, that's an initiative that has boosted morale, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. No. No, because I can still contact everyone. I was supposed to be in Bali right now, um, but obviously the trip had to be cancelled because of coronavirus, but yeah, I had to cancel the trip. Um, I think I am part of the community because I'm self-isolating um, and, you know, social distancing and things like that. Yeah. It's going to be Newcastle or camping. I was going to go to a softball tournament in Brisbane and that's been cancelled, but it's not the end of the world. I'm, I'm not too upset about it. I do feel like a part of the community at the moment, like especially when like even just using like TikTok and stuff, like you see all these people at home and like that's mostly in America though. They're strictly following the rules and I feel like a part of the community around me as everyone's in isolation and all my friends are close to me, but I still can't talk to them. So I can talk to my mind. No, I haven't. Um, I don't actually know, just because being a teenager, I guess people just assume that you're going to break the rules and stuff. And I feel because I'm always inside, I don't feel like I'm really a part of the community just because I'm always in my room and I'm not really out in the community talking to people or seeing what it actually looks like. Yes, we were going to go to Newcastle for the Easter weekend, but now we're at home. Um, not really, no. I wasn't before and I'm not now. No, I'm not. Well, no, I sort of feel disconnected, obviously, because my views on all this are a lot different to other people's. Um, like I said, I'm not as scared of this whole thing. I think that it is targeted and that I will be okay because I'm not a target the Chinese government, I don't actively, publicly oppose any regimes, you know, any of their doings, so, except for this, this is why I had to protect myself, because, yeah. Simple answer is no. Certainly not. I only have to look out of the window to see that there is a community. And I see people walking about, enjoying themselves and, and walking around, trotting around, 
running around. So I do feel part of the community. Before this whole pandemic started, I was planning to go to Thailand with my best friend and his mother, but it also has been delayed due to the coronavirus and has been put aside until the curve flattens and we're allowed to travel safely. Learn to be open-minded and respect people's opinions, even when you may not agree. <laughs> being alone does not mean you're lonely, and being lonely does not mean you're alone. The other day I ventured into the shops and it seemed like everyone had lost their minds and it made me so uncomfortable in my skin. I felt like my my body, like my skin, my hands um, were dirty and that I myself was dirty. I've, I've personally never experienced that before. It's more like a intense need to wash my hands, like I am dirty, I am a disease. That was quite my experience and very anxiety inducing for myself. Especially just walking down a street and seeing um, people skirt out of your way, it's like, oh, there's something, something wrong with me. Something wrong with me. Something wrong with me. As the coronavirus pandemic continues, those on the front line are more important than ever. Healthcare workers, retail staff, businesses and teachers have been operating under unprecedented pressure. Retail workers have been praised as they work around the clock to stock shelves and assist us with our shopping needs, pleading customer patience amid the coronavirus pandemic. Healthcare professionals both on the front line and behind the scenes have worked tirelessly to care for people in need as the virus places critical pressure on our system. Teachers are having to prepare online learning, so please do anything you can to assist teachers, as this is new to them too. And those in the mental health sector will be needed, and we thank the ones who are still doing their job over telehealth service conferences to keep us all safe inside our heads. We thank everyone who is there for each other during a time like this, and it's the only way we will return. Remain realistic. Adaptivity is key. Encourage empathy. Empower your people. When so many people are talking, it can be tricky to figure out what you need to pay attention to. And sometimes it's hard to understand the information you're being told. Health.gov websites provide accurate information which is needed most during this period of uncertainty. Looking after our well-being in times like this can help to reduce stress and is crucial in enabling us to still take calm and effective action in the midst of this global crisis. Together. 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 here to say that if you are struggling with anxiety or any type of mental health issues during this time here are some kind of helpful resources and support for you so there's for example mobile apps such as smiling mind or headspace can really help you or there's just self-help programs called like the desk if you search up the desk and there's um phone on the phone or texting counseling services like Lifeline or Suicide Callback Service. Lifeline is 13 11 14, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the suicide one is 1300 659 467. Again, 1300 659 467. And it provides online counseling. And then general counseling and mental health support. Um, there's Beyond Blue, Care in Mind, eHeadspace, 
men's line or mind spot and there's also many other specialist areas that you can go to search up on the internet highly recommend it if you're going through anything